Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the second of our transfer videos and we're moving on to Brighton because no Brighton fans are out there apparently. So we brought a Portsmouth fan on instead because Brighton's only an hour away from Portsmouth so it's close enough. Yeah. We were going to get the Pal our Palace fan from our Palace video that's coming up to come in and do it but I thought a Portsmouth fan and a Palace fan together might be a little bit too much sold for Brighton fans to handle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I suppose uh, we kicked things off with their, their um, main sign anyway. Yeah. Uh, Matty Ryan yeah. from Valencia, Australian keeper. Um, he spent last year on loan at Club Bruges in Belgium um, because he had lost his place in Valencia team to the fit again Diego Alves, who, just apart from being an incredible goalkeeper, is also the best penalty saving goalkeeper in world football. Um, he's only ever conceded, I think, three out of 22 he's faced or something in the last four years, which is pretty much, it's fucking outrageous. To be I just want someone to score a pen <laughs> Penenka goal against him now, just for the same. <laughs> well, but Messi did actually Penenka him last season. One of the only ones he's conceded. What a player. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ryan is a good goalkeeper and he's a definite upgrade on David Stockdale because... For me, David Stockdale is he's gone to Birmingham and um that's another like that's their biggest loss so far this summer with Brighton and didn't he used to play for years? Stockdale now he's Fulham. Fulham, oh yeah, yeah he's, he's back up though. Yeah, um to me Stockdale is dodgy. He three on goals last season in the league. Which is three too many for any goalkeeper to have. Yeah. Um Choose he makes me. mistakes, he flaps across us. Matty Ryan, I think, is just a much more solid goalkeeper. I know he cost him eight or nine million, but that's nothing in the Premier League now. Um, I do think Ryan is a good sign and then a definite upgrade on what they had in Stockdale. Yeah, I'd have to agree, but I think just in general terms, when, when you're talking about a goalkeeper as your number one sign, and as a Brighton fan, you'd surely be worried. Well, I'd be worried, but at the same time, the player we're going to get on to in a second came on a free transfer. So that kind of counteracts it where he just happened to Boy sense. Boy essentially sense. be allowed to leave Ingolstadt because um, they got relegated. So he was kind of free to leave. But Matty, we'll stick on Ryan for a, a second. He's a goalkeeper with vast international experience with Australia. He's just played in the Confederations Cup. He makes good saves. His distribution is actually very good, which I think is a positive for Brighton because you're coming up to the Premier League and your distribution needs to be a bit better than what Stockdale's was. And they've got Nicky Mayne Paya, the Finnish goalkeeper. He will still be their backup. He's been there a while now, but he's still young. Um, who, if Ryan does struggle to adapt to the Premier League, I think Mayne Paya is a very good keeper. And he can step in. I know Christian Walton, who's their 21-year-old, he's their third-choice keeper at the minute. Now he's coming to Portsmouth for the season, so he's going to be gone. Um, and they don't actually have a senior keeper oh, past that. to their rivals, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, they don't actually have a senior keeper past that. So that would worry me a little bit if Ryan, because Ryan can be a little bit susceptible to injuries. But he had a decent season at Bruges. He had a good season the year before that at, um, at Valencia when Alves was injured. And for me, he's on a different level goalkeeper-wise than what David Stockdale is. So I think Brighton fans will be reasonably happy with him as their biggest money signing of the summer so far yeah and uh, anyway we'll move on we sort of spoke a bit about him um, Ryan obviously and then you were talking about obviously Pascal Gross there yeah. for, from Ingolstadt uh, he's obviously an attacking midfielder uh, it's it's something a bit of flair going forward anyway obviously for Brighton um, I mean they haven't they haven't got much in the squad there that screams to me that they're going to be going all out attack at any teams uh, in the Premier League this season anyway um, the obvious one who's already in the squad from last season is Anthony Knockart who was the yeah. championship player of the season and he's a good player um, he he's quite an Leicester could he so? yeah that's the, that's the issue that I would have with him is that he didn't when they came when Leicester came up to the Premier League he'd had a really good season before that with Leicester yeah. in the championship and it didn't work out for him in the Premier League he ended up back on line I think to Sheffield Wednesday um, and he didn't really cut it at this level and he's going to be a couple of years wiser he knows better English now he seems to feel a lot more at home at Brighton like we saw midway through last season when his dad actually passed away yeah, the whole squad went over yeah the whole squad went to the funeral when they scored the goal even though he wasn't there they kind of got a picture of his dad and celebrated with the picture and stuff like that and held it up 
So I'd say kind of he feels very at home at Brighton, and I think Pascal Gross is a signing that is, if Knockart is ever going to cut it in the Premier League, this is the time because Pascal Gross is a player who will quickly outgrow Brighton, in my opinion, as he comes to the Premier League. I think he suits it well. He's a strong lad. He created the most chances of any player in the Bundesliga last season. And that was with a team who got relegated. And that's in a league with players like Thiago Alcantara, Marco Royce needs fit, Christian Pulisic, who's Man Dembele, um, Thomas Muller, who obviously didn't have the greatest of seasons, Ribery, Robin, Costa. Yeah, Costa, Hakan Chalanoglu, who was at Leverkusen, has now gone to AC Milan. Gross was actually linked with Leverkusen when Inter were being linked with Chalanoglu back in January. Um, so he's a player who was being linked with teams at that level. And for Shall me... Shalom Ogden loves a ping, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves a free kick. <laughs> um, and he has upside-down ears. Yeah. So I discovered that as AC Milan Medical, his ears are actually upside-down. Nice. Um, <laughs> but you can see we're kind of trying to delay talking about Brighton as much <laughs> as possible here. Um, but yeah, I think Gross is a player who he can pass a both feet. Scores goal, doesn't score enough goals. He's only got 17 and 152 for Ingolstadt which isn't great numbers, yeah. but he's a lot of assists and he creates a lot of chances. He's kind of a player a little bit like a David Silva who plays the second pass. Yeah. So you play I think the if, second he, if, he's, pass. if he's setting up a lot of goals, it kind of counteracts the goals he's not scoring if he's putting them on plays for other people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's goal involvement more so than yeah. scoring the goals by himself and I think he does more than enough of that. Um, the one question I would ask like to the two of you is about it. Obviously, you don't know that much about him. But is it important for any team coming into the Premier League to have that attacking player coming in who looks, on paper anyway, like he can really just create chances and open teams up for you, no matter... Because he has come in and come from a team who were in a relegation battle in Germany and he managed to create chances and create gold. Is it important to have a player in that ilk to come into its new team into the Premier League? Oh, yeah, obviously, like <laughs> any in any team, you need a bit of creativity and he's going to scare the opposition, obviously, with the chances he created, so... I think managers knowing that, like you know that the, yeah. the chances he's created, and you're not a manager, so yeah. obviously managers are going to do their homework on him and study if his games from last season when they're going to come up against them and yeah. go from there, and obviously probably have people man marking him. Someone like Mourinho or some, wouldn't get many time of day. He'd he'd bang Herrera or something on him, and I don't think he'd get much look or look yeah. in. But uh, against lesser teams, I think he'll have a lot of joy. If if he can, come, if he can come in, in the season. if he can come in and settle in, that is. Yeah, that's not to say he will. Well, if another centre half, Hudweiler, I think he's pronounced is German, and I think actually played at Hoffenheim with him when they were younger. So he will won't be coming in completely new. As yeah, to have a player who he has previously played yeah. with. He might have even recommended him to him. Yeah. you know what I mean. Josh, what do you think on the fact of having? Is it more important to be defensively solid or to have a playmaker who can actually create goals when you're coming up to the Premier League? Well, I think going up to the Premier League, you're always going to struggle. At, well, not, not so much struggle, but you're going to have to adapt to the pace. Again, like the Championship, it's a great league, but it is isn't level up. Yeah. And I think there is that kind of deception now that they are going to concede quite a few goals. I don't think it would be laughable or anything, but I think there's a standard there that you do have to grow to. I wouldn't... That would be the one part of... Right in, especially in the centre of the fence, that I wouldn't actually completely agree with. Um, I think Shane Duffy and Lewis Dunk are two Premier League quality central defenders when their heads are screwed on. Mm. Um, so I think Duffy actually, clumsy, yeah, about. I think, but especially Lewis Dunk, I think Lewis Dunk is quality. Um, and he will, I think he'll be the rock for Brighton this season, and he'll be a player who, like Harry Maguire was last season for oh. Hull, where he is going to even if Brighton goes straight back down, Lewis Dunk will be going with them. Um, he's a player who is uh, an exceptional, exceptional talent. And um, between him and Duffy, if they can both stay fit and they can both play well, I think that'll give them the best chance of them staying up, even more so than Gross or Anthony Knocker can. I think going forward, like as in an attacking sense, I think it's great having a sign in like Gross and stuff. But I can see him if if players aren't being as as good as ta- and as talented and performing around him, I can see him getting frustrated very quickly and uh, that kind of adversely affect him and as Paul quite rightly pointed out, the likes of Mourinho and stuff will very quickly put a defensive midfield player on him, stifling him up and coming into the Premier League it's it's very easy to get this hurting quite early and that could really affect his performances and all of a sudden he could be on the bench. Yeah, I do think that um a player like 
grounds, as you say, if he gets frustrated in the early parts of the season or doesn't get off to the best of starts, he can often find himself kind of left on the bench and stuff like that. Um, I think in the case of Brighton, if he's the one who's ended up left on the bench, I don't think it's necessarily going to be his fault. I think it's going to be more down to <coughs> the area in which I think they're probably weakest, and that is up front. Um, <coughs> we're obviously going to talk about places that they need to strengthen on the pitch, and I think we should probably start with the strikers, because... Well, I know minute, that they are linked with uh, you know, Izzy Brown off Chelsea. Yeah, but at the same time, for me, Izzy Brown's not a striker. Izzy Brown for me, I know he's linked as a striker and a well, forward. Well, I'm just kind of forward. Yeah, yeah. forward minded players. Yeah, he is. He is a forward minded player, and he is an attacking player. But he played a lot in the number ten role for Huddersfield last year in the Championship, and in really impre- they didn't go. Get him, yeah. I think they've upgraded in terms of the players that they've got in. Well, it's from a, lot, what it's they a long have. deal, you know what I mean? Yeah, and he'd be used to the to the team to the fans to the way they go on to the to the way you know build up the games their training and stuff like that it's just a stranger but anyway it's probably yeah. we're talking about not Huddersfield yeah. so, so. we'll get on to Huddersfield there's loads to do Huddersfield and Huddersfield video because they've made which it. you can check out yeah. on our YouTube channel if you subscribe and if you're a Huddersfield fan please contact us because we can't find one <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to find a Huddersfield jersey before that video we're going to have to put you in an ad yeah <laughs> Please, for, like just three, from the for just box. three euro a month. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll this... give you three euro to come on. <laughs> yeah, we'll buy a chicken fillet roll. <laughs> Courtesy of the chicken fillet roll review, guys. <laughs> wait for that. Um, yeah, I think Brown though is more along the lines of a grouse type <laughs> player. He's kind of a number ten role. He's not an out and out striker. He's not going to play as a lone striker. So they're kind of left at the minute with Glenn Murray and Tom Hammond who, let's be fair, Glenn Murray's been in the Premier League for three different clubs now and he's been no less than shit for all of them. Um, Injury's going to hamper him as well, out of fairness. He's got I, no- think, I, think, I, think, I think if he comes up and he, and he starts off the cup, first couple of games well, he you know, stays injury-free, gets a couple of goals, it might set him up for the season. To me, he's, to me he's Kevin Davis with Lesser. <laughs> I genuinely don't think he's any good. Um, I, I rate I've never, I've never really seen it with him. I just read Kevin Davis, and there you go. Kevin Davis is the worst striker. He's scored a few goals, like the worst striker. I've Between ever him and Heskey, I mean, it's a competition up there. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, Davis did his job to the best of his ability. Yeah. Um, he Murray wasn't there to score goals. He was there to to ruffle feathers. The problem Murray with, scores goals. The problem with Murray, I think, is when you get up to that top level, he's not that quick. And when you're not that quick and you're just relying on kind of, he's got good aerial ability and stuff like that. When you're relying on just good aerial ability, you're coming up against, say, a United or a Chelsea. Coming up against Eric Boy, he's a monster in the air. Mm. The same with Gary Cahill, David Luiz is good in the air. You know, Koscielny with Arsenal, there's brilliant in the air. You're coming up against these top sides and they're going to find you out. And they're not going to give you the space and time that you're going to get against Rotherham and Mahomes. Because it's just a different level of football. These lads are experienced lads who play there. Yeah, but he'd know that coming from the Premiership before. Yeah, but when he's come to the Premier League before, he hasn't scored any goals, so he's never been able to figure it out. Well, and that would be my few, worry. Yeah, he has scored a few. Right? He's got seven Premier League goals in three seasons. I think it'd be a <laughs> risk. A Palace would be just the injury hamper for most of them. Yeah, but then again, Palace have signed every striker, man to man. And Ben Teke is the first one to work out in a few years. And Andy Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Tom Hemed is now better to me either. I, I don't really see... Uh, look, I don't even know who he is. <laughs> um, he was kind of their main striker the first half of last season with Murray being out injured. And he was their main striker the season before that as well. And Scores him a few goals in the championship. I'll eat my hat if he gets more than 10 goals. I'll leave my MTV hat with the chips on it. I'll leave it with a bit of ketchup if he gets over 10 league goals this season. I'm just putting that yeah, there first, and that's on camera. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. It's going to be unfortunate if I actually have to do it. Um, but yeah, I think that's the area that they really, really need to strengthen in. That and fullbacks. Um, I think they're weak, is that? Um, do yeah, you guys yeah. think, obviously you're not that familiar with them, but Bruno, Bruno Saltor is their first choice right back. He's 36 years old. Do you really think that a 36-year-old right-back can come into a season and in the Premier League and 
cut it against the likes of Eden Hazard and stuff like that. No way. Um, <laughs> I just don't understand why they don't get like a loan player off one of the top clubs or something like uh, say United, you know, like Fossi Mensa or something like that. Yeah. I mean, and, and it gives him game time. Um, it could potentially make him make the grade or not. I'm sure Mourinho wouldn't mind giving out well, players like that, but someone like that of that when, mold. Yeah, they had when Duffy got injured last season. They brought in Tomori from Chelsea, who can also play right back, and he looks okay. But they seem to. Yeah, but he's obviously a centre back. Well, no, he's a right back or a centre back. He can do both. He's kind of he's Mason Holgate. Yeah, but Mason Holgate is better as a centre back. Yeah, but well, can do a job at right back. Yeah, I think Tomori's more of a he gets found out against bigger teams at right yeah. back. Yeah, I think Tamori's more of a right back who can do a job for you at centre back, and they kind of couldn't really find. Obviously, Chelsea already had fifty-seven players out on loan at at that point of the season, so mm. it was kind of just whatever well, then, was left in the bargain basement at that point. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think Fossi Mensa is a great show for a signing if Brighton were looking for a loan player from top club. Josh, is there anyone at Liverpool who you'd be willing to let go to Brighton for a season? Anyone on John Flanagan? Yeah, that'd, be a crack, that'd, that'd be a cracking yeah. signing for Brighton just you know complete the set of a definite relegation coming their way <laughs> because John Flanagan is tin pot Josh and you need yeah. to stop pretending he's the, the white Danny Alves he's injured now so the Scouse Cafe <laughs> how is he injured you no, back in pre-season no, he, two days not injured now, but he, I, I thought th- you said he's ginger <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the injuries have certainly hampered his career and I think anywhere where he was going it's just been completely destroyed well look and you can't get into a Burnley team last season for the entire year with Stephen Ward and Matt Loughton as their fullbacks. I think you know but they, maybe just, they, pre- they did have two good very individual uh, seasons yeah, but if Flanagan is as good as Liverpool fans made him out to be three or four years ago, yeah, but that's he's what getting in ahead of Matt Loughton. But that's what you're saying about injuries. Yeah. But he, did, he got the injury towards the second half of last season with Burnley, didn't he? Yeah, but I think yeah. the ones that he sustained at Liverpool really kind of killed him off. Yeah. But I think the best shout there is 100% Fossey Mensa for um, Brighton as a right back. <laughs> and then left back as well. I actually don't know who's going to play left back well, for them no. because Sebastian Pocagnoli who's the Belgian left full who was on loan from West Brom last season he's gone back to West Brom and looks to be trying to get into the West Brom first team so they're not going to get him back so well, they, they don't, don't know why they didn't get Galloway uh, of yeah. Everton he didn't get any game time at West Brom uh, last season and he's just gone to Sunderland now and he can yeah. play left back or centre back and he's a very good player he's filled in for Baines there uh, not last season, the season before, and he filled in at left back for half the season, and he's done a very good job. Look, as much as I joke about him as well, Brighton have had three bids rejected in the last two years for Andy Stevens, and he was available on a free transfer this summer. And they genuinely don't actually have a left back that I can name. At the minute, I think Liam Senior is probably going to start a left back for them unless they sign someone. So, and nobody wants that to happen. I don't even <laughs> think Leroy, his dad, probably wants that to happen. Leroy Senior claimed to fame, was manager of Torquay for 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> took it's the probably job. the length of this yes. video <laughs> <laughs> this video has gone on far too long just rambling about players who don't actually play for probably All right, well we'll move kind of on to their key players kind of for next season um, obviously Knockart will, will be one uh, Gross will be one obviously yeah. I think Duffy and Ryan yeah. um, Shane Duffy on his day when he's concentrating he's very very good and yeah. very very solid Aerial wise, you know, you're not gonna get too many better players. He's a he's a fantasy Premier League pick, if nothing else, because he's a menace in the opposition box. He'll probably score five goals. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably top goals. Eight, eight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think all of them are right in terms of Gross, Knockart, um, Dunk, Duffy, Ryan are all gonna be important for them. I think Dell Stevens in central midfield and maybe Oliver Norwood as well. It'll be important for them. Dale Stevens is actually a very good player in fairness to him. He's uh, been in the Premier League is a long time coming for him. Um, I think he'll impress as well. They do have some... Brighton were quite down on because they really haven't made many signings, but they do have good players. Dale Stevens is a very good midfielder. Oliver Norwood, I think, was unlucky to be let go by United so early. I think he was probably a better player than Danny Drinkwater and they kept Drinkwater a year or two longer than him. Um, well, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to talk about them really, but Hewton being back in the Premier League. I'll go to you first on that one. <laughs> I know, you think, I'd, uh, like what he what he done at Newcastle was, was quite remarkable, and then 
it to be kind of thrown out quite prematurely was disappointing. Um, obviously, when Irish didn't really get the, the rub of the green either, but I think it's it's a fresh challenge for him. I think he, he he's going in on a clean slate, and I think this this season will 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 make us really be able to judge Chris Hilton as a whole because I think it's going to be the. F- in fairness, to Hilton, it's probably the first time he's really had a side that he has fully put together. Come into the Premier League, obviously he's been at Brighton for a couple of years now. They've been the proverbial bottlers in the Championship every year. Um, and they finally <laughs> got promoted automatically, but then bottled the league title. Um, and for me... Sounds a bit of a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for me, I just I don't see what Irish fans see with Chris Hewton. I don't see what people... Is. He's a lovely man. I've met him before, and he's a nice man to talk to, and he's a good football man, as John Giles would say. Um, Did he I, give you a hug? No. You seem like you need a hug. No, I don't need a hug, I'm fine. Um, but I just don't see the top level manager in him I don't see the nastiness to him um, that I think you need in the Premier League especially when you're in a relegation fight um, I think it's essential that you have someone who can, if things are going wrong kind of flick the switch as such and change things up and be harsh to players and bring in new players and go <coughs> right well, you've not worked and you've not worked so we're bringing in these lads and you can sit on the bench for six weeks I just I think he's too loyal to the players that he's already got. And you can see that in the fact that very few players have left. David Stockdale's the only one really to go, and that's on a free transfer. They brought in Gross on a free transfer from, Ingl- from Ingolstadt because they don't really have a player to play in that position on the pitch. And they brought in Matty Ryan to replace Stockdale, who left on a free transfer. OK, but would you would you maybe argue the point he's quite similar to Roberto Martinez as a manager? It was very nice to the players he liked, and he would turn his back on players who disputed anything you could say. I wouldn't say so much as that, but the way you're talking about loyalty kind of brings you back to the way Martinez was yeah. in his Everton days. Yeah, Whereas like when if, he signed Alton and Alcaraz from Wigan just because he liked them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I get what you're saying, but, if, but at the same time, I think Martinez is a far better manager than Chris Hewton is. Um, I think Martinez is better ta- He's better tactically, and you can see it from the fact that he's got the Belgium job is that he is highly regarded. I don't think if Chris Hewton left um, left Brighton next season that he'd walk into the Belgium job or something. He might walk into he, the Ireland under-21s job. But I think he'd get the Ireland job if only he left. I, I also would. I know it's not a video in Ireland, but I think that would be a horrendous appointment. He says that for every Ireland appointment. I, 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 still <laughs> anyway, don't, I still don't like Martin O'Neill. That's, that's just, that's, 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 <laughs> um, but I'm just saying the similarities there between himself and Martinez yeah, from what you're kind of going by. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying about it, but at the same time, I would be of the opinion that Martinez is a better manager than Chris Hewton is. Um, I would have actually been in favour of when Brighton got promoted, as harsh as it sounds, and I know it kind of happened at Newcastle, of Hewton being let go, and then bringing in someone else, not a Sam Allardyce or something, but a different guy. Even as ambitious as it might sound, even when Tuchel left Dortmund, if they'd have gone, right, well, Brighton have money. Brighton, have, they've backed by money. I know for a fact they've got money. And Hewton's just not spending it. So I think if you brought in someone like a Tuchel or something like that, who was just completely alien to what you would have expected, he would have G'd up the players that are there a lot and he would have brought in his own players too to kind of supplement that. And I think they'd be a better team for that than they necessarily will be with Uton. Um, yeah, do you not think that the, it is only early in the window? And, I mean, it's only the 8th of July. So the window's only been open seven days, officially. Yeah, but you see some of the business that other clubs have done, like you say, another team who might be down there in um, Swansea have signed Roque Mesa from Las Palmas for 11, 12 million. Huddersfield have signed That's a just list. a replacement for Sigurdsson when he goes to Everton. He's not really. He's more of a defensive player. He's more of a replacement for Leon Britton. Yeah. Um, to sign Begovic and Aki. Yeah. Uh, Huddersfield have signed 10 players. Like Newcastle have signed players. There's... They just I, think, don't, I just think that they'll do the business later on in the window. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's a good thing for a newly promoted side. I think a newly promoted side needs to do it in the way that Huddersfield are doing it even in the way that Swansea are doing it, where it's a new culture and a new style of play being brought in there from what Guidoline and stuff had before that, mm. um, that you need to do your business early and you need to bring in your important signs. So if you supplement a couple later on the window, fine. 
But you look at Huddersfield. Huddersfield, everyone thinks, oh, they've signed 11 players or whatever. They signed 11 players who are going to be there from pre-season. That's not that dissimilar to what they did last season in the Championship, but they brought in a lot of players in the summer and Wagner came in. And they went from the team who I would have predicted to go down from the Championship last season to getting promoted via the playoffs. Um, all right, well, you're talking about signings and stuff like that. Who would you think in terms of signings that they need to make? Are they allowed to sign Cristiano Ronaldo? Or, um, no. I don't uh, think Messi's even keeping him this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at least that's the case. Duffy lost the Premier League. I think you need to look at a left back. I think a left back is probably the most pressing issue right now for and them. And a right back. And a right back, but at the same time, Bruno is there and they actually have a body to play right back, whereas at left back, they just really don't have that. Um, looking through kind of maybe a Massimo Hydara from Newcastle might be within their budget. Um, Stephen Kingsley, maybe from Swansea, I actually quite rate highly. I think he's a good player. Um, and Olsen has obviously come in there to be first choice there now. Um, John Flanagan. John Flanagan. Colin Lockton's a player so just to fill the void. Yeah. Um, and then kind of you look, shite though too, isn't he? <laughs> you look kind of past that then and you're going, can they find an experienced head maybe to come in at left back? Mm. Somebody's been let go by another Premier League club or a recently relegated one. I think another signing who wouldn't Oviedo. Maybe Brian Oviedo from Yeah, they wouldn't be a bad signing. He would be a great one either. I think <laughs> after his leg break he just went to pieces. God, yeah. God love him. Um God, you're looking past that, and there's not really a. I would have said maybe Van Anhalt, but he's gone to Palace, obviously. A show actually would be, and I think it would be more likely if they had a change manager, or, or if this was Huddersfield or something we were talking about with a German manager. Eric Durham from Dortmund is available for a cup price this summer, apparently about five or six million, and he's a good player. He's a good he can player. Play a few positions as well. Yeah, he can play right back, he can play left back, he can play either wing, he can play central midfield. He's a versatile player. He's played in Champions League finals. He's played in Bundes. He's played in the Bundesliga for years with a top club. He's won league titles. He's won German cups. He worked under really good managers. What age is he? Durham, twenty six now. So he's just coming into the prime. You wouldn't know why. Left he? back. Let's go downfield. <laughs> yeah, Alberto Moreno from Liverpool. Let's put that out there. I think oh, yeah. Liverpool will probably sent him there in a truck. Here you go. <laughs> um, but I think left back's probably the most pressing issue because they don't have one. Okay, um, anywhere else? Because uh, we're kind of struggling to, to talk about them here. I mean, obviously Stru- we're not followers of of their team to be passionate enough to keep kind yeah. of going on. So we're kind of... Kind of clutching at straws a little bit. Um, striker, I think is another one. Um, and I'll ask you on it. Omar Niasse or Anna Valencia? I'll fucking take them. <laughs> <laughs> um, take Nias all day long. He Dan proved last season long. he could do it for Hull. Um, yeah. He proves he can do it as he scored the uh, winning goal against Liverpool. Um, and he couldn't get a game with us. And uh, You know, fair play to Nias. Uh, he was rotting at the uh, reserves, basically. And he said, right, well, the only way I'm going to get put in the shop window is if I play for the under-23s. And David Unser brought him in. He was banging in goals. He got his move to Hull. Then he was banging in goals for Hull. Um, mm. If they had it stayed up, we would have got ten million from. Still think he's going to go somewhere. Uh, Kuman want Kuman doesn't want doesn't want him. So to say Brighton would be a realistic one for. It would be a good move for both clubs, yeah. Yeah. Um, even if it's even if he goes on loan with the option to to permanently sign at the end of the season, then um, I think could be a realistic show if it's going to happen. Uh, we'll we'll wait and see. But um, you mentioned Danny Ings. Danny well. Ings on loan. January, that would be possibly. that would be a good one, but he'd need about six games to get match even fit. back up to speed first of all, and then match fit. Yeah, I mean the pace of the Premier League, everyone knows how quick it is. Like it would take. I think Ashley Bar- I think Ashley Barnes from Burnley is another one Burnley. because John, because um, John Walters has just obviously gone into Burnley now, and I think Sam Vogt is probably ahead of Barnes in the pecking order. Andre Gray is still there for now, anyway, um, and Walters is coming in soon. Yeah, suddenly Barnes has got a fourth choice. Barnes has scored goals in the Premier League. He's not been prolific, but he scored some goals. Yeah. And although he's similar enough in the way he plays to both Hamed and Murray, I think he's an upgrade on both of them um, in the Premier League sense. So I would kind of lean towards him. Or would they not go for Negredo? Negredo wouldn't be a bad shout at all. I know he played with Bruno Saltor when they were at Valencia. So he obviously would know him too and... 
There's good signing for him. I still think Negreiro could make it at a, at a better club. Um, yeah. As a sub striker. Here's yeah. a shout for you. Leonardo Jao. Yeah. Jao did he not come from sense. Brighton? He did, yeah. He was, I think at the time, Leicester's record signing. Yeah. Um, I think Jao is actually a really he's good signing. He's looking at his, he's, he's apparently linked to, to La Liga though. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah Alaves apparently. Someone in Levante and something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, no, that would actually not be a bad show at all. I think um, Joe would make a lot of sense going back to Brighton. Um, it would be a good story with him going back to Brighton and Joe has proven in the Premier League winning season like for Leicester. Really yes. Scores goals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leandro Joe at Brighton's Wayne Rooney. Um, I, th- I think this is a long-term thing for Brighton. I, I would predict now that they will probably go back down. Um but I don't think Brighton fans should be disheartened by that. They're a club who are well built and they're built to kind of progress in a long haul. The lovely new stadium, I've been to it and it's nice. Um, it's state of the art with it, all of its facilities and everything. It's a pleasant place to go to. It's a lot better than the width in was. Um, but this is a long term thing for Brighton and I think this season will show that Chris Hewitt's probably not up to being a Premier League manager for a team who is down the relegation zone. I think if they were a mid-table side with a better group of players, he would be fine and he would do a good job at that. I don't think he's a man set up for a relegation battle as a human being and as a manager. <laughs> and I think that will show with Brighton that he could go down and he could bring them back up again. I have no yeah. doubt in my mind he could bring them back up again if they went straight back down. But I think at that point when he brings them back up, that's the time to let them go. And bring in a new manager with a new philosophy and a new way of doing things. I think that's the only way Brighton are going to progress and maintain Premier League status for a period of time. Okay, well I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, if any Brighton fans out there want to make any comments, uh, leave them below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great weekend.